Happy Friday, everyone. I read a story about a woman who approached the gardener of the king. She was poor and her family was hungry. She saw that the king's gardener was out tending the garden. And so she approached and called out to him over the fence. She asked the gardener if she could offer to sweep the sidewalk around the palace in exchange for some green beans for her family. But the gardener explained that the king has a staff to sweep the grounds. He doesn't need to barter. The poor woman returned the next day, and once again, catching the gardener in the middle of his work, she offered a quilt in exchange for some green beans for her family. Again, the gardener explained that the king has plenty of warm quilts and is not in need of another. This happened a third day, and just like the two before, her offer to serve for the opportunity of receiving something from the king's garden was refused. But the king's daughter had taken notice of these exchanges. And as the woman turned to walk away, the king's daughter hurried outside the gate and stopped her from leaving. She asked her, have you not received any food from my father? The woman looked into the eyes of the daughter and said, I'm in need and have nothing to offer the king that he has accepted. She said, dear woman, you're not receiving anything from my father because you're not understanding who he is. He's not a king to be bargained or bartered with. In fact, He's not a king who is looking for you to serve him in order that you would receive. Rather, he's a king who serves first and gives freely to all who ask. The woman said, I ask out of great need with nothing to return. With that, the daughter said, receive the blessing and providence of my father, the king. And she placed green beans and blueberries into the woman's apron, blessed her and sent her on her way. You know, this weekend in worship, we recognize Jesus as that king. We come before him with nothing to barter with. He is a king who doesn't come to us to be served first, but rather comes to serve us first. And he gives us his life for our salvation. In great joy, he welcomes us into his kingdom. And now from 1 Timothy 1.17, we hear these words, Now to the King in eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. God, we do come before you with nothing to offer you except for our sins. And out of your grace and your mercy, you extend your invitation for us to cast those worries, those sins, our brokenness onto you and to receive back from you a blessing of eternal life. You did not come into this world to be served, but you came to serve and to give your life as a ransom for many. This is love, not that we love you first, but that you first loved us. And now our lives are full of your blessings as being a part of your kingdom. We worship and celebrate you as the king above all kings in a kingdom that will last forever and ever. Amen.